Hey guys, it's Dr. Danny Sugai, board certified dermatologist. Welcome to my channel. I just want to introduce myself very quickly since I have a lot of new friends here on the channel. We're very close to 500,000 subscribers or friends here on YouTube. So thank you guys for watching the videos. I am a medical surgical cosmetic dermatologist here in the Seattle area. I'm originally from Hawaii where I did my medical school training and then went to Harvard Medical School's dermatology residency for four years. I did my internship there at Harvard and then three years of dermatology residency and then moved out this way in the Pacific Northwest. Having a great time on social media and in clinic, seeing a lot of patients who found me on the channel and then make an appointment and see me in clinic. So it's really cool to just have that interaction, not just online, but also in real life. Today's video is very important because it's my response to Kim Kardashian's take on the trend where they come in and say, we're dermatologists. Of course we love sunscreen. So she did, I'm Kim Kardashian. Of course I have a tanning bed in my home. It was a really fancy tanning bed, of course, but it's not something to brag about and it's not a good look or message for the world, especially the young viewers who are watching her. Guys out there, please stop with the tanning bed, the tanning salons. It's 2024, I thought we were past this, but people are still going out tanning, whether out at the beach. I'm from Hawaii and I know a lot of people would sit out on the beach and turn bright red and get blistering sunburns and peel. And it was really sad the last time I was back at home, I saw um, some kids in Waikiki walking the strip and they were just peeling skin off of their face walking down the strip. And I was just really cringing, just thinking like, I remember the days of our shoulders peeling outside, but now we know better. Sunscreen, reapply every two hours. Find a sunscreen that you like and find some sunscreen sticks for reapplication or sprays that you can use to reapply. And you have to reapply every one to two hours when you're outdoors or if you're getting sweaty or getting wet, you have to reapply every hour even. You really gotta watch your SPF number, SPF 30 and above, but also making sure it's water resistant if you're gonna get sweaty or do water play. And then looking at, you know, making sure that you have it on yourself so that you can reapply because putting it on once before going outside and playing, you will get a burn. We'll talk about UVA and UVB now because I feel that it's really important to talk about how we need to block both UVA and UVB. UV radiation, usually we talk about UVA, UVB. There are UVC rays out there, but UVC gets filtered by our atmosphere. So the only two clinically relevant rays would be UVA and UVB. UVA is a longer wavelength that goes deeper into our skin and can penetrate uh, window glass. So if you're indoors by a window, you can get quite a bit of UVA exposure through the window. And if you're a driver, referencing that New England Journal of Medicine image of that truck driver who's been driving for decades and having unilateral dermatoheliosis where half of the face was very much photo age with wrinkles, sagging, crepey skin. And you can also get dark spots, white spots, red spots as a manifestation of chronic UV damage. Now, UVA is going through the side windows. UVB can get filtered through the glass, especially if it's laminated, like your windshield glass and thicker glass can definitely filter out your UVB, not so much UVA, but UVB is the shorter wavelength and a higher energy, and so it causes burns. UV burn, UVB. So those really can cause carcinogenesis like UVA and really hit your skin hard, cause a bad burn that can blister, cause redness and then peeling afterwards. The peeling can be quite irritating and itchy. So what do tanning boots use? They use UVA because UVA actually will help tan your skin but a tan is never healthy, right? There's no such thing as a healthy tan. Tanning is a manifestation of your skin crying for help. It's trying to make melanin to protect itself. It's not a healthy response. It's under attack by UV radiation. It's trying to produce more melanin from the melanocytes to protect itself from further damage. So it really is a manifestation of your skin crying. That's what a tan is. So UVA is used by the tanning salons and UVA is not related to vitamin D production at all, right? You can get vitamin D from UVB hitting your skin, causing it to activate vitamin D production, or you can ingest it as a supplement or in your diet. So I usually say, get it from your diet. The sun is not a reliable source because there are a lot of people in Australia and Hawaii with vitamin D deficiency, and they're not just like indoors, they are outside. There are a few studies out there that show that surfers and skateboarders in Hawaii and Australia 
will get vitamin D deficiencies. The sun is just not a reliable source of vitamin D. And even more so, the tanning booths do not have UVB, which is needed to activate your vitamin D production. When tanning salons say that they help with your vitamin D levels, no, that's, that's false, right? I, I'm all for vitamin D supplementation and having a healthy diet as guided by your primary care doctor. Vitamin D is a very important vitamin and deficiencies are really rampant in the Pacific Northwest, that's for sure. But don't go to Mexico, Arizona, California, Hawaii, Florida, and try to get a good tan to try and up your vitamin D. That's not a healthy way to go about it because you're gonna cause carcinogenesis in your skin, have DNA kinks, and that leads to DNA mutations and skin cancers like squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinomas, which I treat and diagnose on a daily basis. And then there's also the deadly malignant melanoma, which I do find even in Seattle. So I'm just from speaking from experience, melanoma is a real thing. It's not like it's super rare where we hardly ever see it. I treat it all the time. I surgically remove it. And so I really do take uh, sun exposure seriously. So I had to make a video in response to Kim Kardashian's video on her tanning booth. And the other thing that was crazy to me is that Chloe, her sister had a melanotic melanoma on her cheek. A melanotic melanoma sounds crazy. You're like, how do you not have melanin in your melanoma? That is possible. You can have a pink spot that is still a melanoma. Melanomas don't always have to be a raised, obvious black spot, right? It can be flat, it can be small, it could be light brown and have different colors in it, it could have a little red in it, or it could be all red. And that's the scary part in our field is that you can have an amelanotic melanoma where you have no pigment at all, and it's just as serious as the pigmented melanomas. Now, Chloe had that on her cheek, and thankfully she's doing well after the surgery. I didn't see the follow-up scar um, for Chloe, but I did make a post on amelanotic melanomas, and that was very nice. That video came to her attention, and she made a nice comment saying, Thank you for sharing, I had to learn the hard way. Even after her sister going through melanoma surgery and, and her dealing with the tough diagnosis of melanoma, which can be quite deadly, her sister still has to show off her tanning bed. I just had to say something because I know a lot of people are watching, a lot of people look up to her, so I just wanted to do a video, not just short form, but also here on YouTube, talking about the dangers of tanning bed use and just tanning in general, right? Because the studies out there show that just one session in a tanning bed can increase your risk of melanoma significantly, over 20%. And it could also range between 30 to 60% for basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma. If you do one session in tanning booth, you're really increasing your risk of skin cancers, all forms of skin cancer significantly. So I usually say one is not okay. It's, it's very much one, it, it really can cause that damage that we worry about. So I just wanted to spread that little Bit of info if you want to talk about sunscreens i'm happy to talk about sunscreens all day the best sunscreen is the one that you're willing to wear every day i like la roche posay i like their anthelios tinted now i'm starting to really prefer other brands over the my og anthelios um, i'm liking the tinted dermatology i'm liking elta md still if you want to stay with tint the uv elements the uv clear tinted are all great options i've been using the skin SkinCeuticals uv fusion that tinted sunscreen is awesome if you want to go for something not tinted you can go with the uv sheer by elta md la roche posay's anthelio 60 is awesome this is one of my favorite sunscreens. It rubs in so well. It is a chemical-based sunscreen. Um, a newer sunscreen that I've been really enjoying was the CeraVe um, Hybrid. It's a hydrating hybrid sunscreen with water resistance. So it has zinc oxide, but also has chemical UV filters. Check that one out. That one is a really nice one. Something I wish we had in the US would be the La Roche-Posay UV Immune. This is one of their newer sunscreens. Their L'Oreal has their own filter that will block long wavelength UVA, which UVA is quite stubborn, right? Like thankfully zinc oxide covers UVA better than titanium dioxide by itself. The long wavelength may not be covered fully a lot of times in your sunscreens. That's a sneaky one, right? That long UVA because it can really cause hyperpigmentation, especially in skin of color, and really go down into your collagen and disrupt the collagen leading to wrinkly, saggy, crepey skin, which we don't want to age is a blessing. I really say let's strive for healthier skin, right? Finding a sunscreen that will block long UVA. I really hope the US starts getting a better UV filters and a bigger range and selection of UV filters to use. K Beauty, Asian Beauty, actually, they're they're doing really well. I mean, they they have great filters. They are lightweight. They don't leave a white cast. 
So I know the beauty of Joson is great. I've been using that one quite a bit recently. So we can talk about sunscreens all day, right? Just finding one that you like is so important, right? That's all I have to say today, guys. I finished clinic today. I had a nice day. I just wanted to come home and chat with you guys about sunscreen, really, and tanning beds. Hope you guys like the video. Please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys for the next video. All right, take care and peace.